Yo, what's up guys? Uh, welcome to Elite Rounders Program Corner. Um, we'll probably change the name later, but for now, this is good. Uh, the point of this is that poker is going to a direction where we'll be using a lot of different softwares to help our gameplay, to have some new ideas and all sorts of like that. So I think it's very important to actually learn use the programs. And it's kind of a thing you just can't ignore, to be honest. Uh, yes, you can get by without the softwares and all these things, but like, I think in order to be a modern poker player, you have to kind of deal with this. And, you know, well, at least watch our channel when we use these and show you how to use them and, you know, how to learn from them and what sort of conclusions you can learn. Uh, and you will probably keep up uh, somewhat with the population and the best players. But again, the best players are definitely studying the programs, using them to the best possible, you know, uh, use and, and for the benefit. So this is definitely part of poker. You just have to know a little bit in today's world. Um, and the more we talk about something like Game Theory uh, which will be a different part of uh, our channel, uh, we will talk about more in general about game theory and everything and how it can be used but either way uh welcome and this is a uh, poker snowy we are using today um i think it's this is the most like friendly program out of everything i think because it's very easy to use uh that's why i like it especially i i like to recommend it most of the my players I don't recommend first to go like Cheeto Plus or Biosolver uh, because they are more complex and it takes time to learn. This is the easiest way to learn basically. Um, especially like to get you started like with the preflop ranges and stuff like that. I don't think it's perfect program by any means, but it will give you, give you like very good basics uh, and understanding a little bit like how it could potentially look like, uh, you know, how, how you can create like a unexploitable strategies even though like i don't think focus now is perfect in that but like it does give you idea how to be unpredictable and really tough open to play against uh, so the software is fairly simple itself um so you can look at like which position you are opening uh we've added anti here so you see uh sorry three four five nine players um so there's nine players and we are opening under the gun as you see here. So this will be the frequency we open the hand and sometimes we fold. So 28% we open and rest of the time we fold, right? So you see A7 suited will be 57% open, rest 43% fold, right? And here you see the bet size. Um, again, that just means like how big we are opening preflop. As you see, one, one and a half bot will be $562. Uh, in this case, I guess it's dollars. Uh, so we could use half pot. Uh, I personally, let's say we are 40 big minus deep. We probably want to use like close to minimum opening size. So our ranges change a bit when we are opening smaller size, as you can see. Uh, if you open bigger size in general, you're opening tight range. So, but yeah, you see the cards are changing a little bit too. If you open bigger size, you would open a 10 of 100%. If you open small, you open 48. Um, so definitely, if you open bigger, you are not even opening sevens, which is kind of interesting. Uh, so yeah, you see some difference. But again, I would look at the one fourth of the pot. Uh, um, and just look at the range is like a little bit like memory size. So under the gun, we could potentially open range like this. And you know, you work from that. So let's say in this case, we are going to study some flop situation. Let's say you play the hand, you open the button with some hand. Let's say 7-6 suited. And then we line folded the big blind calls, which is very common. So let's make a like just like a random flop. So this this looks like fairly decent flop. Okay, 10, 5, 2. So what should we do here with 7, 6, for example? Um, we could just look at like what sort of hands we would be betting. And as you see here, 7, 6 suited. Um, if we go, if we use the half pot strategy, we would have check 9.57% of the time, bet 90.43%. If you use pot, uh, you need to be a little bit more polarized with your betting. Um, but I think 
what this program is good, it can kind of give you idea how to split your range. And that's something like people struggle with a lot. So you just have like different combos. You can try, try different bet sizes. Again, there's nothing wrong betting here per se, 25% with your whole range. That's perfectly fine. And maybe even certain villains is the best play, but that's what you need to determine. Like, I think that's why it's kind of cool to have a lot of different bet sizes because it kind of keeps your villains on toes instead of like, oh, I will always face that 25%. And it's actually fairly easy to crack in a way if somebody use always the same bet size. You can look at it easy, easily from GTO Plus or PO Solver or Pokestone how to play against this strategy. But if you're kind of mixing like different bets and just doing random stuff, you know, like it's tougher for me, I, I think, for villains to put hands on you, right? I, I mean, they don't know what's your half pot strategy, what's your pot size strategy or 2x pot which is not really used on this spot with this stack size uh, by Snowy. But again, 5% you could bet here. And hands which you could bet uh, 2x spot here is kings, queens, jacks, aces, ace three, for example. So, so you could use like different strategy based on how you feel. But again, I think it, there's nothing wrong. Poker is kind of funny game because like, I don't think there's like right answer to every spot. There's just like right answer to certain villain, I think. That's kind of true. Uh, based on the reach, what you have on the population or the player itself. I think there's definitely right answer to that one. But again, uh, I think poker is kind of funny in that sense that sometimes your assumptions might be wrong and you might be making horrible play versus guy. If you expect them to bluff too much, but you end up calling and he's actually in reality never bluffing, that's a horrible call, right? And you thought he could have bluffs. So again, poker is a really interesting game because you can never be that sure. That's why it's very important to be good in game theory, understanding what is optimal. Because you don't know if you don't know the villain, um, it's easier to just play more GTO type of strategy at the beginning, and then you add used based on how to play. But yeah, so we could look at this half pot. Like uh, let's say hands, you would check here, hundred percent. So flop is 10, 5, deuce. Uh, so yeah, pocket fours, you could check. Pocket threes, ace king, ace queen, 90%. Ace deuce, 85%. Uh, ace king, king deuce. Also a lot of deuces are checking. Even six, five, five, four, five, three. Not too much value betting. So you just check back. Six, five, seven, five. So it looks pretty standard. And we can look at like what you're betting. Well, it's kind of easy because you bet everything, right? <laughs> um, but yeah, so technically we just bet everything. Um, but yeah, what hands would be mixed? Ace, queen with the clubs could be mixed. Ace, queen with the diamonds could be mixed. Ace, queen with spades could be mixed. But yeah, so this is how you can get ideas how to play with these programs. But I personally really recommend Poker Snowy. It's, it's really fun fun to play with and you can actually even practice hands. So I think it's, it's kind of nice. But yeah, we will talk about more uh, Poker Snowy later, but I hope you this gave you a small idea what you can do with the software. Um, but yeah, it's really fun to play around and it is fairly simple as well. So enjoy.